Hello Pro Mix Academy, I'm Amos Heller, a uh, touring bass player with Taylor Swift. We're here in my home studio in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm going to walk you guys through what I typically do when I get uh, emailed a song to play bass on, something we typically call a remote session or an e-session. So in this case, the song I'm going to be working on is called Down, 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 and it's by a group that I used to play with back when I lived in Cincinnati called Ellery. And you should absolutely check their music out. It's very cool, uh, very like piano driven, uh, independent pop. And I love them and they've asked me to play bass on a tune of theirs. I tend to try to treat a recording session like a live, like a live thing where you're just gonna play it all the way through one time and try to get it right. So here we go. through a couple of a uh, couple of bases that I have that I feel like are going to be a really valuable def uh, really really valuable addition to almost any uh, any bass player's stable um, a word or two about what they are other other bases like them and what you can expect out of them so this is one that I probably get the most comments on whenever I play it out it's an Orlando which is actually a bass that was made in Japan in 1970 or 1971 these aren't particularly common. Uh, if you ever seen the Stone Temple Pilots Unplugged, I believe the bass player is playing one of these. And I got this from a vintage dealer here in Nashville and I absolutely love it. It's, it's, it's got flat ones on, it's a short scale, so it tends to be very bloomy and warm. It'll do a Beatles type thing, but it's a great bass for ballads. Uh, I'm a I'm a bass player who comes from a place that of uh, I like basses with a lot of definition. I grew up playing, you know, a lot of metal and a lot of funk, so I like a lot of bite and attack. But I've fallen in love more recently with with a warm, sort of boomy sound, and you know, this will obviously do. We'll give you that kind of like Beatles Hofner sort of thump. Um, there are a lot of a lot of bases like this. Hofner makes uh, a lot of really great short scale hollow body bases. It's a super useful thing uh, for for anything that's more mellow, and it, I just love it because it's kind of an oddball. I haven't seen a lot of them around. Its output is actually fairly hot, and, I, and it has a three way pickup selector and a tone knob. I leave the tone all the way up and pickup selector in the middle. I like I just like how the natural. <laughs> like the natural tone of it. I like how quickly the note dies. And yeah, so it's a it's a great bass for for ballads or Americana, anything you wanna play. If you're playing against like an acoustic guitar or banjo or something like that, you want it to sound almost like an upright without the, uh, the danger and expense of buying one and learning how to play it and then driving it all the way across town. You could also have one of these tiny little guys. Um, another bass that I feel like a working bass player is definitely going to want is uh, the active five string. Usually, a, what a what a friend of mine calls a Fender shaped object, anything a Fender, Sadowski, Sur, Mike Lowell, something like that. 
This particular one is a, is a custom shop that I just got that I'm very excited about that has a Sadowski preamp, Nordstrand pickups, a hip shot bridge, and uh, was master built by Dennis Galuska and, and it feels and, and just sounds it. Again, something that you want for something any anything more high powered and modern. This is definitely one that has you know plenty of definition. Um, this is much better for modern stuff, rock, anything you want to play with a pick that you want it. Um, you want something like this that, that that's responsive. It has a nice hot output. Uh, modern country relies a lot on stuff like this. I'm a, I'm a big believer in the five string. I know some guys get upset for reasons I can't possibly fathom. Um, that a bass should have four strings doesn't make any sense to me because this has, if anything, more bass. Uh, but it's definitely something if you haven't gotten your fingers around the idea of playing on one, get you a cheap one and just get get into it. Get into the idea of where the, where the notes fall on the string. It's definitely something you want to be comfortable with. Um, I have basses that I have tuned down super low to basically supplant the idea of a five string, but getting a well-made one is, is something you're going to find is pretty necessary. It's just nice not to have to reach for a different bass. If I'm doing a show on a small stage and one, just one of the songs happens to be in C sharp or something like that and the recording, you know, you need to have that low note available. It's great not to have to reach for something else and have, you know, lug two bases in and out, any, anything like that. It's, it's definitely a must have. So yeah, so you got a short scale weirdo hollow body, hopefully with flat wounds on it and some kind of high, high test. This has an 18 volt preamp, so with a lot of output, but it'll, it'll definitely put you in that sort of like that modern place, that modern mindset. Um, this is, this is a precision base, which I'm, I'm assuming most of you are going to recognize. Uh, also, I think an absolute must have an incredibly versatile instrument for how few controls and options it has. Uh, just really one of the one of the great basses that responds very well to to different different approaches. You can get a whole range of tones out of, out of something like this. Anything from you know. You know anything from thumpy to if you you know if you end up on a pump gig for something. You know it'll it'll do just about anything. Um, I suppose a word on on playing with a pick, which I know is another thing that's kind of divisive for bass players. Uh, I would really recommend learning how to do it and learning how to do it well. Uh, I've been on numerous gigs and in many situations where where it's required where and it's and it can be a lot more useful and versatile as a technique so i think people t i think people tend to think of sid vicious and the sex pistols as somebody you know was was sloppy and imprecise uh, i would urge you to look up any youtube video featuring bobby vega and there's a there's there's an attack and approach you can get with a pick even if you're being subtle with it There's, there's a lot to it to be to be said for for playing with a pick and I, I guess I understand why some people turn their nose up at it I wouldn't turn my nose up at anything uh, I think one of the best pieces of advice that I got off a podcast of all places was that there's only one answer in show business and that's to say yes so you want to be able to say a confident yes to almost anything do you play jazz you know you want to be able to say yes and mean it do you play with a pick can you slap all that kind of stuff there's really no reason to turn your nose up at anything. Every playing approach, every genre has something it can teach you about the instrument that will be very applicable to almost any other any other genre. I mean, you can 
can learn how to play with a pick if you're playing, you know, pop punk, and you'll be surprised how useful it is when you're playing funk, obviously rock or country or anything like that. Yeah, you know, I learned about left hand muting from playing playing to and learning Rocco, you know, press. And now it's a technique that. The techniques that I use all the time. You can pick up all these little tricks from all these different quadrants and then bring them into different situations and contexts and get these really interesting sounds out of it. Because in the end, that's all the only thing that really matters is how does something sound. But this, this would be another bass that I would absolutely recommend as, as far as being a working or gigging bass player. You see these on stage a lot and I think you see them up there for a reason. It's, they're versatile, reliable, there's only so many things that can go wrong with them. Uh, this, this is the one that I actually smashed in half at a show a long time ago and it was glued back together and it plays as well as it ever did. They're, they're resilient, tough basses and they sound great. One of the first recording projects I ever did, uh, I ran up against a guy who to this day is probably still the most exacting producer that I've ever had the pleasure of working with and he was an absolutely brilliant guy, a drummer, but one of those guys who's just very fastidious about each part and how it should sit and what it should be and I learned a ton from him though it was very difficult at the time, and something I would really recommend any bassist uh, work on and pay attention to is their sense of time. Just their, their approach rhythmically to what they're doing, how their part is sitting, whether it's, it's right in line with the kick drum, slightly ahead or slightly behind, and getting a grasp on that, either listening to it or creating it with my hands, has been a lifelong journey. And I just remember sitting there with him And I remember sitting there with this producer and the part he was asking me to play couldn't have been much simpler. You know, something like that, something that wouldn't take me more than a minute now. And we must have spent all afternoon on it. He kept telling me my timing was wrong and at that point I honestly didn't know what he was talking about. It's like, you're ahead of the beat, you're ahead of the beat, and I didn't understand what he was saying. So my, man, absolutely my recommendation is to, is to hone in on that idea as much as you can. And the way that I practice that these days is I'll just, I'll put a, put a loop together in Logic or GarageBand and record myself playing to it and listening back. It's a, I think it's a deceptively difficult thing to listen to yourself externally while, you're all, while your brain is also occupied with making the music and choosing the part and doing a fill and writing a line. To do that and then also be able to more or less evaluate it externally is I find extremely difficult. So a way that I work on that is I just re I re I'll record a part and it's usually something simple like the part I just played or playing simple eighth notes or half notes even and listening back and investigating for myself how, how do I think that feels, how does it feel, that whole concept that's most of what a bass player has to be concerned about is how are you making the drums feel? How are you making the part feel? And the software that's available, even if it's something on your phone, even if you get a drum machine going on your phone and just record yourself using your, using your voice memo or something like that, but the, the process of listening back to something that you just did, while you're not in the moment, I find very often something that feels cool to play or would, you know, would, would, would be fun to play right there. When I listen back, with the bass out of my hands, most of the times I'm much satisfied with something simpler than I, than I think I'm going to be. So that would absolutely be something I'd recommend is to find a way to hone in and work on your time. Practice with a, with a metronome or, you know, play along to songs or something like that, like to engage your inner sense of, of tempo and time as, as a bass player. It's absolutely invaluable. It's 100% as important as it is for a drummer. And, that's all those guys ever think about. I'm just gonna, gonna demonstrate a couple of different pedals that I have, uh, which vary in their degree, <laughs> degrees of usefulness from I would take this to a gig to this is something I only do in the privacy of my own home. Uh, a lot of bass players these days are showing up to gigs with octave pedals because they are awesome. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with an octave pedal,
So it takes the, it's kind of what it sounds like, it takes the note you're playing and then replicates it an octave down. This is the one I'm using is the Aguilar Optimizer, which has some really cool settings. So one of my favorite things to do with an octave pedal, so you can hear. So you can pretty clearly hear the note. Hear the note I'm playing and the note below it. I like taking the note that I'm playing completely out. Gives you kind of a bass synth kind of thing almost. More and more bass players that I know are being asked to play key bass or to cover parts that sound like key bass. And an octave pedal with the clean tone dialed all the way out is a great way to start getting with that. So this is the Aguilar Optimizer. I also have an MXR Bass Octave Deluxe that I like a lot. And you can do the same trick with this one where you just pull the dry signal completely out. Uh, next we have uh, a bunch of different drives and overdrives and fuzzes that I like a lot, including the uh, Seymour Duncan. This is a good one that sounds mixed in with the clean signal. So just to give you a really sort of raucous kind of over the top thing. The uh, Dark Glass Vintage Deluxe, another just absolutely outstanding distortion pedal with a lot of different settings. And maybe my personal favorite is the White Elk Fuzz. pretty out of control. Uh, not a lot of producers will let me do that. One of my favorite tricks to do though is to blend a drive or fuzz or anything like that with an octave and you can get some pretty outrageous. Again, some outrageous stuff if I ever end up in a Parliament cover band. That's the kind of thing I'm going to use. Uh, another pedal I've become a huge fan of recently is the Mower Mod Factory, which is this tiny little green guy down here that has everything from a chorus to a phaser. I'll do an envelope follower. I especially like the stutter setting. And I recently discovered uh, something called Electroharmonics Freeze, which is a great way to create some interesting textures, but it'll actually take a note that you're playing and just freeze it. Let me get you 
get you one in tune. All right, here we go. Then just take a note that you're playing and freeze it. Mm -hmm. 